Okay, so you're looking for a 5G phone, but on a budget. But first, have you watched my last video to see if you even need 5G? Chances are you probably don't, but if you are fully decided on getting a 5G phone, but you don't wanna to spend too much for it, then this is the video for you because I'm going over the best budget and mid-range phones for you so you don't have to spend an arm and a leg upgrading to 5G. Buying a budget 5G phone might seem like a no-brainer. You spend one-third the cost of a flagship phone from Apple or Samsung, and you still get it connected to 5G? Yes, please. In fact, that was my initial reaction when I first started seeing budget phones, was this is great, now we don't have to spend $1,200 to break into 5G, but unfortunately, that's not necessarily the case because there is a little trick to budget 5G phones that I'm gonna let you in on and help you figure out which one's best for you if you're even gonna want to buy a 5G budget phone after all. So the thing with budget 5G phones is that you're missing out on some very crucial software that you get with the more expensive name brand flagship phones. So let me go over that a little bit more. When we're talking 5G, there are three different types of 5G. You have low band, you have mid band, and you have high band. Now the high end phones have all three bands built into them, meaning you can connect to the slow 5G and the super fast 5G because all 5G is not created equal. But when we're talking budget phones, sometimes you can't connect to the fast 5G. You don't get connect to the high band. The high band 5G is the numbers we see that are incredible, that the advertisers are throwing at us that are the best speeds you'll ever see in mobile. But when we get to budget phones, it's not possible for lots of them to connect to those amazing speeds. So that is just the one caution I wanna let you in on and why budget phones might not be the best investment, but I'm still gonna go over the best ones to help you get the best bang for your buck, so let's get going. And for me, the best bang for my buck and getting a great overall experience is experiencing or having the capability to experience those super fast 5G speeds. So the phones I offer will have all the bands, will have all the software necessary to connect to all three levels of 5G because if you can't experience the best of it, why even get it at all? And that's kind of my thought around this video. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> and a second kind of word of caution about this video is that when it comes to manufacturers giving phones to different carriers, sometimes there is a little bit of differences in the software of them, right? So my phone recommendations are gonna be different for AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon because sometimes Verizon's phones are a little bit better, they have more coverage, sometimes AT&T's phones are. So I'm gonna go through these one by one. There's only a handful of phones I recommend across the board for all carriers, so stay to the end for those. The first phone I am recommending that is more of a mid-range phone, it's not necessarily budget, is the OnePlus 8. Now, normally I wouldn't recommend this one because it's kind of a newer phone, but it's actually a year old. They've come out with the OnePlus 9 now, so all of the OnePlus 8s have been marked down, and that's why I recommend it. I recommend it specifically for T-Mobile and Verizon. Now, with Verizon, the price is a little bit more expensive because they offer 5G ultra wide band with it so the cost goes up a little bit now with t-mobile it doesn't offer the highest band so it's a little bit cheaper so the range is going to be from 500 to 600 but it is a really solid phone and with t-mobile it has the bands you need to connect to most of t-mobile's 5g which is why i'm recommending it so i want to go over the aspects of this phone real quick it was released in april of 2020 it's cheaper because the OnePlus 9 just came out and many people who review this phone say the battery life could be better. The selfie camera isn't great at 16 megapixels, but overall they love the phone and recommend it. The next phone I'm recommending is the Galaxy A71 5G for AT&T and T-Mobile users. It is in the $600 range. So again, this one isn't super budget, but it is about half the price of high-end name brand phones. So in that regard, it's slightly budget, but it's still more mid-range. There's no high band with this for T-Mobile and AT&T. It's just the mid and low band. So you're not gonna get the super speeds that you see advertised. You're just gonna get okay speeds. Uh, for the most part, I only have access to mid-band 5G and it works just fine for me, but it is always fun to experience 5G plus or the ultra wide band, high band 5G from all the carriers. So if you're not looking for that extra level of access, then this might be a great phone for you. If you are, then hold off because I got some better options for you. <laughs> Now with this phone, reviewers say they like it for its battery, its camera and display, but say the performance is lacking and can be a little bit sluggish. So keep that in mind with the Galaxy A71 5G. 
Now my last general kind of recommendation for people is the Google Pixel 4a 5G for T-Mobile and Verizon users. Now again, it's more expensive at Verizon because it has all three bands. At T-Mobile, it only covers the mid and low bands, so keep that in mind. But overall, the Google Pixel 4a 5G is a really awesome phone and one of the cheapest of the bunch at just about five to $600, depending on where you get it. Five, closer to 500 with T-Mobile, closer to 600 with Verizon. Now for this phone, people love the battery, the camera and performance, but the screen could be a little bit stronger, but overall a really solid phone. Now I am getting to the official recommendation for the best budget or mid-range phone for 5G capability, and I'm going to offer the same phone recommendation for T-Mobile and AT&T. So T-Mobile and AT&T are both GSM, which is just a fancy way to say they both kind of use the same technology. Verizon is CDMA, so they're kind of a little bit separate, which is why I'm choosing different phones for them, even though most phones work cross-functionally now, but it doesn't matter. I'm getting ahead of myself and losing train of thought. So the best phone that I recommend for T-Mobile and AT&T is the iPhone 12 mini. Now the iPhone 12 mini comes in at around $700 at the base price if you get the lowest amount of storage available for that device. Now I know that might feel like a cop out or like a cheap way to get around all of these phones is saying go with an iPhone. I feel like that might be kind of obvious for some people, but going through all of these phones and looking at all the specs and all the prices and everything about it, the iPhone 12 mini is the cheapest phone that offers all three bands of access to 5G for AT&T and T-Mobile. So it's a little bit more expensive, but it's the only phone at this price that offers you the full 5G experience as the iPhone 12 mini. So I do highly recommend that for AT&T and T-Mobile users as the cheapest way to get the full 5G experience on those networks. Now, if you don't want an Apple product, if you don't want an iPhone, the equivalent to this phone would be a Google Pixel 5. It is very similar in price range and in functionality and and, and how nice of a device it is. They're very similar, just one's an Android, one is uh, from Apple. So those are my two recommendations for the best overall 5G experience on AT&T and T-Mobile is the iPhone 12 mini and the Google Pixel 5. And just for kicks and giggles, if you want to know the cheapest option for 5G from AT&T and T-Mobile, here they are. The absolute cheapest option from AT&T is the LG K92 5G coming in at $395. And then for T-Mobile, it's the Motorola One 5G Ace coming in at $264. Both these phones are gonna be fairly low quality and they're not gonna offer great 5G access. It's just gonna feel like you have 4G. It's not going to feel like anything faster than 4G LTE. So that's why I don't recommend those. The speeds aren't going to be much faster than what you are working with right now if you have 4G. Now with Verizon, it's a little bit different. See, most of Verizon's phones that they sell on their site that you buy directly from Verizon all have full 5G access. They're all just a little bit upgraded from what AT&T and T-Mobile offer, and they're all just a little bit more expensive because of that as well. But the cheapest phone that has all the bells and whistles for 5G that connects to all three 5G bands that will get you the full experience is the Samsung A42, which is about $400. Now with a $400 device, you're not looking at something super high end or super high quality, but this is probably the best budget 5G phone that gives you a full 5G experience and that's why I'm recommending it just for that. It's just the cheapest possible way to get 5G on Verizon with all three bands. The TCL 10 5G UW is the same cost as the Samsung phone, but the Samsung one has a little bit higher reviews, so that's why I chose it as my recommendation, but they're both equal in terms, of what, in terms of what they offer for 5G coverage on Verizon's network. Okay, that is it for this video. I have given you a bunch of different op options to choose from in terms of budget and mid-range phones. Let me know if any of these sound intriguing to you or which phones would you have chosen for this video? What 5G phones are you looking forward to testing out or buying or using? I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching. I'm Sherry Riggs with Whistle Out TV.